Hello guys, Joao here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Get Good Drums latest library, the P4 Kit. As someone who has programmed drums for the entirety of this album in my covers, it's incredible to have the actual instrument right here at my fingertips. So I'll be showing you the samples and features of this library for you to see if it's a good fit for you. And we're going to also be mixing something that sounds a bit like this. <laughs> That's dope. So let's open the P4 kit in its default state. Let's run through the drums and cymbals. So this is very loyal to the recording of the album. Most of the cymbals will be fixed options, but there's some really cool considerations on snare. So let's start there. The three snares that are on the kit are this VK bronze snare, which is going to be your middle of the road snare. There's going to be a lower tuned option, which is this Pearl Sensitone. Very heavy and ringy. And there is the nice cranked high tuned option, which is a Pearl Reference Brass Snare. So between these three snares, you can cover all the ground you want. You can go middle of the road, you can go beefy, and you can go snappy. This is very cool. It's like literally all you need and the three of them sound incredible. As for kick, the kick that was recorded on the album was this Pearl Reference Custom. 22 inch, that sounds like this. Very cool. There was also in the studio a 24 inch kick drum that sounded like this. Very different, different click, different low end. They decided to give it to us. And uh, I think that's really cool because then we get different options for kick sound as well. Toms are also this Pearl Reference custom kit. Matching the kick, of course, were made for Matt. And we have four Tom options. There's this 10 inch that wasn't originally on the album. For the second Tom, you get a choice between 12 and 13. Let's play the 10 as well. And then your floor toms are a 16 and an 18. Very, very good sounding, almost fluffy toms in the best of way. I love these. As for our cymbals, the options are going to be in your main right crash, where you get the choice between this Byzance and the MB20. The Byzance is a little bit um, thicker, while the MB20 is going to be your cut through option with some extra high end. There's also going to be an option in the stack, which is Matt's signature double down stack, where you can play it as is or invert it for some extra tightness. The other option is the ride, where you get this really cool Bison's Heavy Hammered Brilliant. That should work for most applications, but if you're looking for something a little bit older sounding and drier sounding, there's this really cool vintage too. The other symbols are fixed and incredible sounding. These hats. The wide crush. The main left crush. Very beautiful for accents and your China. One of the better Chinas I've heard recently. I really like this one. Your little ding dongs, you got two different splashes, an eight inch and a six inch. Cool for your little tool style playing. And then some mini hats actually. Between the three of these, you can get very, very tricky with your programming. All right, now that you've listened to the samples, let's go to the mixing. So let's see what mics we have available. First thing you'll notice is this is very simple compared to something like Invasion or even Modern and Massive. I'll explain the direct mics as I travel through kit pieces. What's most important is that your overall kit picture microphones are very simplified. You get a room and then you get overheads. 
as opposed to something like modern and massive where you had two overheads and then the rooms were a close room a far room and a mono room here you just get a uh, nolly's dedicated blend again faithful to the album and really really cool sounding as well as overheads this really makes your life easier and it already sounds good and it's still very customizable as long as you mix it differently. Let's actually hear what they sound like. I'm going to solo the room. It sounds really nice, pleasantly dark. This is not middle farm which all these libraries were recorded at beforehand. This is Magpie Cage at Baltimore, and it has a different character, mainly in the low end, I'm noticing. Let's listen to the overhead. It's got all you need, nice clean symbol information and some, some good shell ambience if you'd like to use that. Now for direct microphones, for kick, you get uh, a blend of some different inside, outside, maybe sub kick microphones that will be sounding something like this. So very rich in the low end, very rich in click too, and very, very dry. This is super cool for any of our usual rock and metal applications and together with the room should create something very pleasant. For the snare you get your usual snare top microphone and snare bottom microphone. They'll sound like this. Snare top soloed. Snare bottom soloed. Let's try a different snare. Let's try the cranked brass one. And then, of course, your toms. Let's go to a tom part. Really good sounding. What I notice is that these, like I said, have somewhat of a fluffy character that the kick and snare don't have. The kick and snare are very snappy and the toms We'll need some EQ to get them in the same level of clickiness, but as it stands, this is very nice instead of starting with some very clicky toms that have no low end at all. They sound really, really good. Cymbals is where you're gonna get a bunch of stuff because when recording the album, they spot mic'd every one of these little cymbals almost. I hit a tom, I'm dumb. So, you got all of your spot mics, uh, one for the hi-hats, one for the ride, one for the china, every one of the splashes, the mini hats, and the stack. What I've chosen to do is to sum them all into a spot mic track, because I don't want to bring them all out to my DAW, because that's a lot of tracks. And of course, your overheads and room. Most of your symbols will be coming out of the overheads, traditionally. which is where they sound the best. Let's go over some of the special mixer features. You've got your envelope, which is very good for controlling, well, the attack hold and decay of your samples. So if your snare for some reason is sounding very um, lengthy on the direct mic and you'd rather it be lengthy just on the room mic, for example, you can turn this on and turn the decay a little bit down on the snare top, for example. Another application is that the toms have a lot of low end ringing out on the sample library, which is incredible, but it can be too much. Listen to this. You can see it here too, which is incredible. So what you would do, for example, is you would grab your floor tom envelope and turn the decay a little bit down. And then you've got your dedicated reverb, which sounds a little bit like this. Let's solo it. And then of course you have your turbo. Turbo use is your pre-made processing to get this, these samples even more mix ready. 
So full turbo on your snare top should sound like this. And no turbo. I'm hearing some EQ. I'm hearing some compression. Experiment at your own taste. All right, now let's get to some mixing. I have my cover of satellites here ready to go. I got the MIDI, which is the same MIDI you were listening to beforehand. Programmed around the 120 region for hard hits. So this is a very hard hitting drummer. We are um, mixing, which I like. You can experiment with the 100 region, the 110, and you'll get different characters since this library is very well sampled. We'll be going from this unprocessed sound to this sound. Awesome. All right, first things first, let's talk about the drum selection. It didn't change much from the original kit for me. I was looking for the V-cast snare, which is our middle of the road tuning snare. I chose the album kick too. And then I got rid of the top tom because I didn't need it. And this tom is going to be the higher 12 inch one instead of the 13 one. The crash is the thickest, the Byzantz medium thin, and all the rest is just as is. Now let's balance this out in the mixer. My kick drum, I want it to be very much focused on the direct mic and not really on the overheads in room. So there's very little overhead and room information. Here's the direct mic and here's it with the overheads and room. It may sound like there was no difference, but the processing will make a difference. Also, a very cool thing, you can affect the stereo spread of your individual drums in the room and overhead mics. So I did it to the kick to make the kick a little bit less wide because your kick should be mono anyways, and if you can focus down the ambience, I think you should. This is a good option. As for the snare, the snare, I will want a lot of room ambience. So this is the direct snare. Oh, and there's a bit of, a little bit of reverb. Let's turn it off for now, because that's going to be important too. Direct snare, and then with the overhead and room mics. This is what's going to make all the difference later. Tom mics, they all have a little bit of reverb too, which is a decision I take later. So I'll turn that off for now. And the toms will be getting a bit of overhead presence and some a fair amount of room presence as well. And now with overheads and rooms. As for cymbals, I mostly want to hear them in the overheads. I'm not going to leave a lot of cymbals to the room tracks, and I'll be using the spot microphones to enhance the little splash cymbals too. So at the end of the day, I'm looking for an overhead microphone that has mostly cymbal information. And for a room microphone that has mostly, basically only snare information. You'll see why in just a second. All right, let's get to some processing. Let's start with the kick direct microphone. In terms of EQ, this sounds perfect. At least for my taste, this is a really, really nice balanced kick drum. So here's what I thought could make it better. This is gonna be the main element in our drum mixing today. It's an emulation of an SSL channel strip. The reason we're going for it is because the EQ is very musical, which is good for drums. And just running a drum through it is gonna give you a little bit of saturation that already helps tame the peaks and turn up the ambience, which is gonna be a common theme in this drum mix. So the first thing is filters, where I get rid of a little bit of sub beneath 25 Hertz and get rid of a little bit of click above 18k. Then there is the slightest boost at 200 for some extra oomph. And then there is a sub boost at around 60 hertz 
maybe two decibels that I thought helped the kick fight the bass. The most important thing in this part is the compressor. So I'm going for some fast attack compression to make sure the dynamics in our kick are a little bit evened out and especially the click in between those because a fast attack is going to really clamp down on the kick click and help it sound very, very consistent. Let's turn this on. And off. You'll hopefully be able to hear a little bit of sub increase and the compressor working on the drum click. Then I hit it with another very tiny layer of compression just to make it the most even possible. In this compressor, we're always hitting at about 1 dB and this soft vibe is another fast attack compression that makes sure the attack gets nicely evened out. And then another measure to even out attack is ju just a straight up limiter. So anything that goes past this threshold will be taken down. You can see this is not a lot of processing. We go from this kick to this kick. It already sounds amazing. Our snare direct mic will be going from this to this. A little bit of a bigger difference here. So the first decision is to cut out some of the little rings. This is a matter of taste. Here's one at 300 hertz. That doom. And here's some at 540. This one is a bit more apparent. I just get rid of them to make the snare sound extra clean. All you hear is the frequencies that impact you. Then our same SSL channel strip is here for the saturation a bit more. You can see it boosted here. It's called the THD here. What the saturation is going to help is again, taming the attack and boosting the ambience. Controversially, maybe, I am boosting the attack in a different way, which is a bell at 8K. Not only does this give us more attack, but it also accentuates the snare bottom. And then the most important piece of the puzzle for the snare is this 200 Hertz boost to make sure the direct mic is nice and impactful. If I go overboard there, you see what I'm going for. Our compression for the snare, again, going for a soft vibe on this Drumforge compressor. What this is going to do is it's going to help us tame the snare a little bit and also give it some weight as the compressor pulls the volume of the decay back up. Before. After. It just sounds way more controlled, which I like. And then in the same vein, a limiter to get rid of the highest peaks. Working very lightly, if anything at all. The toms are where we're gonna work a little bit more. Let's switch to the tom part at the end. All right, what I'm hearing is a lot of low mid content that makes these toms very, very fluffy. So if I'm looking for something that's fitting this metal mix, I'm gonna be cutting some of those frequencies and that's this EQ. So a little bit less of 280 and a little bit less of 800 got me the scoop I was looking for. It's not too much, it's none of this. just making them a little bit more clicky. Then I'm going for another SSL EQ. I chose this one in comparison to the Brainworks one because this one has a little bit more saturation and this one from Waves is a bit cleaner. And on these toms, since they're already so boomy, I am not looking to saturate them any further. I'm actually, as you can see, trying to filter stuff below 70 hertz to get rid of the subbiest subs and getting rid of some click that's way too high at 18k. 
then I am boosting the nice amount of click at 8K. This is the main thing about this EQ. Check this out. The way you determine the right amount of click is by playing them side by side with the snare. For decibels makes them about the same amount of click as the kick and snare. This compressor is here once again to make sure that the toms are nice and consistent in terms of dynamics. So you can see the soft hits only get ducked about 1 dB and the heavy hits will be hit at about 3. And in the same vein, but working a little bit harder here on toms, a limiter is going to get rid of the peaks of the attack. Very cool, we now have a very punchy drum sound and now let's get some cymbals and room mics to make it sound big. So everything that has cymbals in my drum mix, I like to bus together in something that I call the brass bus because it's where all the brass is. This is going to be all the direct cymbal mics and the overhead and room. Why I like bussing them together is that I can EQ every single cymbal track from here. And here, there are going to be some pretty heavy cymbal easing um, solutions. So listen to the cymbals as I turn the effects on and off. Hopefully you've noticed some of the cymbal harshness going away. Here are some of the whistles I found. One at 2.8 that I wanted to get rid of and one at 3.5. Even if not all of the symbols have them, just cutting them here will allow every single symbol to be a little bit less harsh on those areas. I also, in the end, decided to boost some very high 14K because this sim these symbols were sounding a little bit dark compared to the shells after I EQ'd them. And these symbols, I think it's the different room the sample library was recorded in. You can see they're a little bit darker just by looking at the EQ curve. They have this very pleasant roll off, which I decided to pull up a little bit. And then here's a dynamic solution for symbol um, easing. This is the Brainworks refinement, and what it's doing is just like the plugin Sooth, if you've heard of that, it's deciphering where the cymbal is most whistly, or the guitar, or anything you run it through, and it's gonna get rid of that dynamically as it pokes through instead of being a static EQ. Here we're soloing what it's doing. Listen to those frequencies. That's what it's taking away. As for spot mics, I like to leave the hi-hat on a separate fader to make sure I can automate it if necessary. All the processing that's needed on spot mics for me is to get rid of any low end beneath, let's say, 300 hertz. Overheads. So in these overheads, I'm looking for the most symbol clarity. And the way we're going to go about it is by getting rid of stuff beneath 150 hertz, which is just kick, a snare, and toms anyway. And it's also some symbol rumble. But the main culprit of symbol rumble, in my opinion, was the 420 region. Ha! Where you... <laughs> where you... um, Well, listen for yourself. It's like that part of the symbol where it just wobbles and it gives you some of that that I took away for extra clarity. And overhead compression is something I am digging into because compressing your overheads the right way is going to give the parts so much more impact because of how the symbols will be hyped. So listen to a before and after on this one.
It just sounds like he's hitting harder. Compression on the overheads is something you need to look into. As I started looking into it, I noticed that it just sounds like the drummer is m more passionate. It's overhead compression. So very interesting. About four decibels on a cymbal hit. That's not, that's not too light. I like it. Room is where we're gonna make the whole thing come together. So here's where we're at right now. You could say, okay, this is very good, but listen to what it's gonna be. Our room, if you remember correctly, is mostly snare information. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna compress this to hell and back. So what's gonna happen is everything that's quiet will be brought up and then the snare, as soon as it's hit, is going to destroy everything else and become the loudest thing in the drum mix. So the way we're going to go about that is, first, we're going to run the whole room microphone hard into the SSL saturation. So the input gain is turned all the way up and the saturation is all the way up too. Let's check a before and after. You can already hear everything become just that little bit louder. I also took advantage of the EQ to cut some cymbals. All you need to do is go to the 4K area and ease your ears a little bit. Just a little two decibels. And here, look at the meter. So a snare hit is about 10 dB, which isn't the hardest I've hit a snare on a room compressor, but check the before and after. Immediately, the kick we put very, very quiet, the cymbals we put very, very quiet too, become nice and louder, and the snare absolutely destroys everything. So if you play the snare direct microphone by itself, and then you play it with the room mic, they become one. A snare direct is your impact, and the room microphone is your decay. All right, now we need to make this whole thing come together in the bus. So my strategy for the bus is that pretty much the same as the direct mics. I want to enhance what's best in them and then I want to turn down some peaks for control and I want to bring everything else up for size. The first thing is going to be an EQ to get the most out of our high end. So the most important thing here is this boost at 10k to make our cymbals shine and our drums punch. Not really subtle at all. This clipper here, very strategi strategic, damn. We're looking to cut the highest peaks of the snare out of the drum mix. This clipper is very visual and you can very clearly see the peaks of the snare being cut off, which is good because it's gonna make the compressor after it work a little bit less hard and give those peaks a nice distortion to cut through. And then the drum compressor, you just duck it and make sure it's hitting your kick and snare a little bit and everything else will come up to that level. You can see about one decibel of compression on the kick and maybe five or six on a snare hit. Let's see a before and after on the drum bus compression. everything sounds bigger. Very cool. All right, guys, that was the GGDP4 kit. Let me know down below if you like these sounds. And um, in my opinion, this is the best instrument Get Good Drums has made so far. There's no question here. It's obviously worth your money. It's just a matter of, do you have the drum sound you're looking for already? Are you looking to experiment with some new stuff? Are you a fan of P4? Because th this just sounds like the album. It's insane. It's almost as if it's the same drums and mics, which they are.
So yeah, I don't have much more to say. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this review, consider jenting the subscribe button as I do more of them and that's gonna be it. If you're interested in seeing my mixing process for different drum kits and different, well, instruments, guitar and bass too, you can check out my Patreon page where I do a bunch of them. When I use this on a cover, that cover will be here so you can hear this exact drum tone in action. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.